And now, once again, Richard Thomas. Our next story is for anyone who's ever faced the terrible fear of being tormented by a bully. This is usually a childhood trauma, and very often, children caught in this desperate situation wish that they were bigger, stronger, and better able to protect themselves. Well, one little girl's prayer for protection was answered in a most miraculous way, eventually changing her life forever. In 1942, nine-year-old Thora Knight was the only girl in her class in Ligonier, Indiana. And the other 23 boys didn't make life easy for her. Ow! Being the new kid on the block, they, I guess all the boys had to sort of prove themselves, as it were. They used to have a contest to see who could make me cry first. And whoever did won the contest for the day. Um, by the way, do you have your lunch with you? Because I'm getting really hungry. Please leave me alone. They tie my pigtails in knots. Anything to make me cry. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? I have very bad feelings about that school. It was very lonely for me. And when school was over, I went home and cried. I cried all the way home. Each night when Thora went to bed, she said a prayer, asking God to send a big brother to protect her. I began to imagine, and the more I imagined this big brother, the more real he became to me. And then one day, something strange happened. It's like someone walked up behind me and put their hand on my shoulder, but there wasn't anyone there. And I just sort of said, well, who are you? And I, that's when I heard something that sounded like Jerry, Jerry. When I first heard his name on the wind, from that point on, he was my big brother. And he was Jerry, and he was right there. The thought of having Jerry by her side gave Thora new confidence. Did you bring your homework for me to copy off of? You're not gonna get to do that anymore, Billy. I had this overwhelming oh, really? yeah. sense of well-being that it's okay. Get out of my way, Billy. And I had courage coming out of my ears. Make me. Okay. And I whipped the socks off that little sucker. I did. <laughs> Thora's imaginary brother, Jerry, stayed by her side as she grew into a young woman, comforted by the sense of protection that he gave her. Hello? By 1968, yes. Thora's mother, Lillian, was living with her in Phoenix, Arizona. One evening, they received an unusual oh call. God. And I heard her say, I didn't think you would ever find me. And um, I thought, it must be an old boyfriend. Alice Hawkins is my cousin. But the more she kept talking to this person on the phone, mm -hmm. the more upset she became. And she started to cry. Goodbye. And she hung up, and she turned around and looked at me, and <laughs> she was crying. Oh. And I looked, and I knew. Mom, do I have an older brother? Yes, you do. I knew it, I knew it. I knew I had an older brother, yes! <laughs> tell me everything, tell, you have to tell me everything. But so Thora was so in for an even bigger surprise. I don't know where to begin. When I found out his name is Jerry Hartman. Uh-huh, the voice on the wind all those years ago. Three weeks later, Jerry arrived from his home in Minnesota to be reunited with his birth mother and sister. Jerry? Laura? Hi. Hi. Oh. That first hug is absolutely indescribable. I didn't want to let go. Oh, Mom. <laughs> he was right there where I could touch him and feel him and know he's real. This new brother and sister spent the day learning about each other's lives. I got a mother and a little sister. When I first met her, 
And we talked from, I don't know, like eight hours at a, at a crack. You don't know, you guys won't believe how excited Jerry explained that he'd never known he was adopted until he became an adult and his parents revealed the truth. That his birth parents had been forced to give him up during the Great Depression. When he finally examined his adoption papers, he discovered their names, Lillian and Ralph Hawkins. It took quite a few years to locate Lillian. We combed uh, Indiana for Hawkins, and finally we, uh, we finally found one that knew him. And he said, yeah, they're out in Phoenix. This is going to sound strange, but when I was a little girl, I imagined that I had an older brother, and he would protect me from all of the bullies. If I'd have been there, you know I would have. Well, from both of you. You try to make up for lost time, you know, but of course, it's, what's lost is lost. But to have a sister now, it's, it's, that's really, really nice. It's been more than 30 years since I met my sister, and now that I've had that 30 years uh, with her, and uh, I feel like my life is uh, complete now. To have all of this suddenly come together, she has her son back, I have my brother. Ah, it's a miracle. Jerry and Thora are no longer able to travel across country to visit, but they keep in constant touch by phone. Hello. Well, hi, little sister. Even though we're miles apart, we're still together. There's just that bonding there that even though I can't see him or physically touch him, he will always be right here, right here. And from the time I first felt that hand on my shoulder, it's always been there. And I know in my mind, my heart, that Jerry will always be right beside me.